What's up everyone? Welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. And welcome to the all-new Mercedes-Benz CLS, the 2018 model. My name is Max and I'm going to take you around the car today, uh, drive it along this road and then we'll take it for a quick Autobahn blast, really short one, uh, just to see how it handles itself. I know, you know, it's not that exciting to drive this on the Autobahn, but still we want to see how it goes from zero to top speed and well how it drives over there so that's uh how this review is going to be structured let's take a look at the spec first because this is an edition one and uh, these will be available for about a year after the launch of the car and well you get it's sort of an amg line with a few extra goodies added to it so we have got these very very nice 20 inch amg wheels um, and the paint is called selenite gray so it's a matte gray um, we also got an amg front bumper and it has this diamond grill uh, with all these diamonds uh, with sort of a copper glow over it uh, that's also part of the edition one pack it has new front lights which are really wide and sharp and give the car quite an angry look um, the front of the car is a bit wider the grill is wider and well the design is really about making the car sleeker uh, wider and lower than before and especially at the front end i think they really succeeded because it does look it has sort of a shark nose it's slanted a bit so this is angled a bit the bonnet of the car goes all the way here to the nose and then you have this this shape right here and as i said it's slanted and then you have these these sharp angled light units which yeah give it a real shark nose front end um what else well of course the cls always had quite high doors with low windows uh frameless windows as well and of course it's uh, an evolution of the legendary cls which came out in 2003 and uh, mercedes really invented this genre of car the four-door coupe uh, a lot a lot of other brands followed after that but you know the cls is the original one the big daddy of the four-door coupes and at the back it's a bit less elegant if you ask me um, it has new light units which are positioned uh, quite low to give it a more a wider appearance yeah i'm not sure about the back to be honest uh, it has led front and rear lights of course and it also has yeah those are real they are actually exhaust pipes coming through there and well when we get here you see the, that really nice swooping roof line um, yeah I think from this angle it is quite a pretty car yeah it's a pretty car okay let's take a look at the engine There is the all new M256 inline six petrol engine, which replaces the old V6 uh, petrol. And well, it's part of the new sort of modular uh, system that Mercedes is handling. So also in this car will be uh, a four cylinder, an inline four available, which is basically this engine with two cylinders cut off. And uh, there are some other advantages of an inline six engine of course it's more smooth it's more supple it runs more smoothly uh, you, you don't need a, a balance you don't it doesn't need any balancing uh, because of that and well it, it just runs better and well it's kind of cool to see that mercedes is moving back to these inline six engines uh, coming from the v6 and before that 
they always used inline six engines. So that's kind of cool. Nothing really, nothing else to see here. And we'll take a look at the interior. So we've got this ash wood uh, with a really nice exposed grain. So you can actually feel that. That's really nice. An addition one badge, an IWC clock, which is also part of the edition one pack. Uh, this copper colored stitching. These seats are edition one as well with copper piping, copper stitching with this diamond pattern in the middle and these edition one floor mats as well. Again, with copper colored piping. So I'll push the starter button <laughs> and you actually don't really feel anything. And the reason for that is that there is uh, a completely new 48 volt system in this car with an electric motor, an ISG integrated starter generator, uh, which sits uh, right in between the engine and the gearbox and this electric motor is used for three things it's a starter motor a starter motor it's a it's an alternator and it's used for the drivetrain as well so it has three functions um, the alternator part is the fact that it drives or it powers some systems that used to be on the crankshaft so like uh, an air conditioning or a water pump or an oil pump things that used to need a belt to drive them to power them but they are now powered by this electrical system which decreases the amount of petrol needed to power these systems and it's also more efficient because uh, they can be switched on and off whenever they are used or not necessary uh, they can be turned off so that's a lot more efficient it's sort of a mild hybrid uh, it also acts as a power boost. That inline six petrol engine delivers 367 horsepower and 500 newton meters. And that electric motor gives it a boost of another 22 horsepower and 250 newton meters. And well, you really feel that when you hit it off the line, full throttle, it just goes immediately. You will see that in a minute. And also available in the Netherlands are a CLS 350D, um, which has 286 horsepower and a CLS 400D, which has 340 horsepower. So three inline six engines available right now, but there will also be a four cylinder engine, as I said, which will also use that 48 volt system and a CLS 53 AMG which will use this 48 volt system and also another electric compressor which will aid the power delivery um, and it has like 435 horsepower and this just has a regular twin scroll turbo alrighty i think i've covered it all well interior wise um it it really is a combination between e-class and s-class this is an s-class steering wheel and this is really, really nice. Those vents, I really love that. And the way they move is just, oh, that's so smooth. And and the way that clicks, really good. Uh, also new for this car, we've also seen it in the new A-Class, are these little rings of LED light. And uh, you can change that using the ambient light menu in there. Uh, we will also upload a night PUV, so you can really check that out. Uh, but a really cool feature is that when you click this yep yeah, there it goes so when you raise the heater or when you raise the temperature these lights turn red and when you go a few degrees down they turn blue I know it's a gimmick but it's it's pretty cool yeah I read somewhere that the electric motor actually also helps with uh, the engine stationary so when it's at idle, it's at really, it's just over 500 RPM. That's really low. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. Let's take it for a drive. And before we go down this road, check out our watches. We've released new watches. It's called the Turismo, rose gold with brown leather strap. 50 pieces available. Uh, it's sort of our merchandise. So if you're interested, check it out. Ignitioncollection.com all right driving the all new cls what is it like max well let me tell you guys it is silky smooth i mean 
it, it's like this this engine is running on baby oil and butter it's it's really really smooth and you know especially when you drive it just when you drive it regularly just relax and drive it it is insanely comfortable and that new engine combined with that electric motor it just it just adds a level of comfort that you know a regular petrol engine wouldn't uh, achieve or the previous v6 wouldn't achieve so we'll go left here beautiful flowers it has a 9 speed 9g uh, Geartronic gearbox which I don't particularly like I think it's a bit nervous and it sometimes it shifts really quickly and yeah I it's not that smooth uh, when you start give it some throttle yeah it's not great but when you drive it normally like most people will it is really really nice we also have air body control, air suspension, which is an option. Um, you can, as standard, as standard, this car comes with steel springs. Uh, then you can upgrade that to adaptive dampers and upgrade that again to this air body control, air suspension system uh, with driving modes that alter the adjustable dampers. So it becomes more soft in comfort mode and a bit firmer in sport and sport plus. But let's be honest, this car weighs almost two tons. It's not an AMG. Um, it's more important that this car is comfortable in comfort mode than that is than its sporty setting uh, with its firmer suspension. So we'll just drive it in comfort for now. I'll take it to Sport Plus later on. The engine itself actually produces quite a nice sound in here. It's not that intrusive, you don't really hear it that good. But when you do hear it, yeah, I, I kind of like it. Because it sits right beneath the S-Class, you do get a lot of features from the S-Class, like all the safety stuff, like I said, the steering wheel on the interior is a sort of a mix between an E-Class and an S-Class. You get those two 12.3 inch uh, screens which work really good and we've talked about that a lot so I'm not going to bore you with that it works really good and you can switch between the dials and stuff um, just check out this review of an s-class up here if you want to learn more about how this all works and what you can do with it other than that the styling the design is really really cool we also have this Burmester audio system which also looks really good it sounds great but it looks good as well and well as i said that turbine design air vent is just it's really lovely all righty let's put it in sport plus handling wise um in sport plus i mean you do feel that it gets more firm uh, but it it is really heavy and it is really dialed for comfort i mean Yeah, it is nice, it is nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's not sporty or anything. Okay, let's put it back into comfort mode. And I'll show you that sailing mode. So if I release the throttle now, it should go into sailing mode. Let's put it in eco. There it goes. Did you see that? The ref counter dropped. It's at zero right now, zero RPM. And I'm just coasting, but everything is working and the engine is completely switched off. And this sailing mode is available on other Mercedes cars as well, even on AMGs. But uh, the way that works, it just disconnects the engine and the gearbox. So it has no drive, but the engine is still running. And with this system, it's at zero. I just tap the throttle and the engine starts up again, but you don't hear or feel anything. It's so weird. It's so seamless. It's yeah, I, th I really, really love it. And this is sort of hybridization that Mercedes sees for the future. Just, it's an aid. I mean, eventually, you know, we're going to see more and more electrification, but the, the way this works is just that it, it aids the petrol engine. It makes sure that the petrol engine and the car work more efficiently like this. I mean, it's coasting along. The, the engine is just not 
running. I mean, how, how insane is that? And I just tap it and it starts up without, without you even hearing or feeling it. I mean, that's just, that's great. I really like it this way. This car is also a lot more economical than the previous one with the V6. Um, I mean, we've got a new cycle, new test cycle, so the difference isn't even that great with the new cycle, but if you would put this car through the old cycle, it's a big difference. Okay, enough about that. It is, it is quite powerful actually. It feels really punchy. Let's take it to the Autobahn and check out how it feels from zero to top speed and and check out how comfortable it is. Alrighty, let's take it for a drive on the Ultraman and see how it handles itself. I mean, it's really comfortable on regular roads, so I expect this to be really nice on the Ultraman. Let's put it in Sport Plus mode. And Get these dials right here. There we go. Wow, you do really feel a little bit of electric boost there. Off the line. And that 376 horsepower engine taking over after that. 4.8 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. I mean, that's not slow at all. 250 kilometers an hour top speed. And as I said, we've got that air body control, air suspension, uh, which makes it super comfortable. And we're almost at the top speed already. That's 250. Wow, that was actually quite quick. That's the limiter. And well, even though we are in Sport Plus mode, I mean, it's a bit firmer, the suspension, it's a bit stiffer, but still ridiculously comfortable. Uh, this car could do this all day. And it's, it's really nice, actually. It's supposed to sit right between the E-Class and the S-Class, this car, and well, you do get sort of that uh, that S-Class comfort, even though, you know, an E-Class is already really comfortable. You do get that whiff of S-Class in here with that nice interior and, you know, that super comfortable setup. All right, well, it's not going to get any more exciting than this, so I'm just going to get off here and also end the review. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out this POV review right here or you can really binge watch this POV reviews playlist. We've made a lot, so enjoy those and you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. Thanks guys, see you at the next one, bye.